Good evening and welcome to Broughton Church. My name is Ellen. I am part of the congregation here at Broughton and tonight I will be leading our reflection. Um, we will be focusing on Peter's denial on Monday Thursday. So let's start in prayer. Dear God, help guide us tonight. Send your Holy Spirit to come, stir something new in us. Help us along this journey as we journey with Jesus towards the cross. Help us to focus not only on the emotive side of things, but to be able to find the joy and hope. Just help challenge us afresh this evening. Amen. Right, so this evening, um, Part of the reflection will involve pens and paper but and also your feet to my knowledge you should all have feet so that shouldn't be the issue but i would encourage you now to go and get some pens and paper as you'll be needing them for later so as i have already said our focus tonight is following um, the crucifixion story and tonight we are looking after jesus's trial and at peter's denial of jesus we have also been reading through a particular psalm each evening and this psalm has been used to help us lament and reflect on this last year as well as helping us to get in the right spirit for this holy week, this week leading up to the death but also resurrection of Jesus. It again echoes with what we're going to be covering tonight and is just really powerful so let's read together. Again, this is Psalm 42. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go and stand before him? Day and night, I only have tears for food. While my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? My heart is breaking, as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshippers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my saviour, my God. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you. Even from distant Mount Hermon, the source of the Jordan, from the land of Mount Mizar, I hear the tumult of the raging seas as your waves and surging tides sweep over them. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me, and through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. O oh God, my rock, I cry, why have you forgotten me? Why must I wander around in grief? oppressed by my enemies their taunts break my bones they scoff where is this god of yours why am i discouraged why is my heart so sad i will put my hope in god i will praise him again my savior and my god now another thing we've been doing this week is been also trying to focus on things that we're thankful for things that to help us reflect and find that joy and the hope in Jesus that we know we have. So now take that time to think, can you find three things that you've been thankful for today? If not today, this week. Maybe for the sun, the turnout in the good weather. Maybe you've been able to make plans with people that you haven't seen for months. Maybe you're just thankful that the restrictions have lifted. Let's just think of those things now together. Now we come to our reading. Luke chapter 22 verses 54 to 62. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight 
She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are worth them. Man, I am not, replied Peter. About an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the cock crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. I don't know about you, but this part of the Easter story always challenges me. It always strikes me. This loyal disciple who has journeyed with Jesus through the whole of his ministry suddenly is vulnerable. Left shaken and shocked at the fact that his amazing colleague, his amazing friend, has just been arrested and is now being put on trial. This person who he believes is the son of God was easily captured and arrested and taken away just like that. The truth of who Jesus is and his debt is starting to sink in. That these tales that Jesus has told of him dying might actually happen. I don't know about you, but the shock waves that were sent out when this pandemic actually was realised were massive. Just like Peter's shock at his great leader being taken down and taken away from him, the pandemic took a hold of us. We may not have been in Peter's physical situation with being that close to Jesus, but we have all been feeling far. But we have all, we may not have all been in Peter's situation, being the loved disciple the trusted disciple who suddenly turns and disowns Jesus. This is where we find Peter in shock. Shock at the fact that his beloved friend has just been taken away from him. That these stories that Jesus has been telling about his own life might not just be his stories. For us, we've had a similar experience of shock. The shock that this pandemic that we'd started to hear about just in dribs and drabs last year, actually happened. It took a hold of us. It made us vulnerable, like Peter was made vulnerable, like we were standing on trial. I don't know about you, but have you had people asking you, so where is your God in this situation? And how have you responded? Have you been like Peter and just denied all knowledge? To help us reflect and respond to this reading and these feelings and emotions that are stirred in us when we read this, I thought it would be a good idea to do something practical. So this is where you'll need your pens and your paper. So what I would like you to do is to draw around your feet. So here you'll find a picture of me with my feet on some paper. Now, as you can see, both my feet fit on my piece of paper. If yours don't, then feel free just to draw around one foot and then use both sides. Right, let's have a go. So after you've finished drawing around your feet, I want you to choose one of those feet, one of those footprints. Now we're going to use this footprint um, to start our reflection. So I want to, you to think of times in your life where you felt or acted like Peter. Where have you felt afraid? Far from God. When you have doubted God, doubted his very existence, even denied him. Have people, your friends, your neighbours seen you going to church, coming back from church or seen some, um, seen a picture or a drawing or a cross even around on a necklace and asked you about it and you've just waved off the comment. 
Have there been times where you felt like Peter, felt abandoned by Jesus, abandoned by God, found it hard to actually believe that he is who he says he is, even though you've journeyed with him for days, months or years, there's always times where you feel far from God, feel left. Just take time now to think about those times. Jot down any thoughts that enter your head. So we're focusing on those times where you've felt far from God, felt vulnerable and maybe said or did things out of fear that you should not have done. That you realise now upon reflecting were not the right thing to do. We're not the things that showed Jesus love or acted in Jesus' name. where we've managed to conquer that fear, conquer those nerves when people have asked us questions about Jesus and where he is. I want you to write down times where you felt prompted by God to step out in your faith, to be courageous. So remembering that courage is the absence of fear. Peter was able to overcome his fear. He was able to overcome his weaknesses and his doubtfulness and become a great evangelist. Now all of us are human and we all get things wrong. We all doubt God and we all feel far from God, but in those times where we don't, where we're able to listen to him, to press into him, where are those times where you've been prompted by God? Or maybe you are being prompted by God to do something. Have you been able to talk with a work colleague about God? been able to help them reflect and potentially be, walk alongside them whilst they've been grieving? Have you been able to share church with someone who you thought you'd never be able to? Maybe even invite someone to Alpha? Just reflect and think, are there any times where you've been prompted by God to step out? And if not, where is he leading you to now? Now to close, I'm going to play a song I found has really helped me to reflect on this passage.
Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander My faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Saviour Spirit lead me when my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander My faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Thank you for being part of tonight's reflection. It was lovely to have you watching, even though we can't see you. Good night.